Hello, this is Tanya Cunningham in Madison, Wisconsin with uh, the next installment in a series of tutorials on using GIMP for image to track. I'm stepping a little bit outside the series this time to uh, produce a sort of a quick start um, tutorial for people that might want to just know how to find tools that are useful and are willing to spend time on their own exploring those tools. Um, in the first tutorial, we used this image of a woman, uh, loaded it through image to track at 200 stitches wide and at 100 stitches wide. And you can see from this that we would want to increase the contrast to try to come up with a better knitable image. So I'm just going to close these, open that image in GIMP, and do a little bit of work with it so you can sort of follow along and see what tools I like to use when I'm <clears throat> altering an image to optimize it for knitting. Um, so the first thing I would want to do is to crop it and I need my rectangle selection tool to do that. Uh, several ways to get the tool you can uh, click on R on your keyboard you can go to tools, selection, tools, and select rectangle and you can also bring up your toolbar, your toolbox window and select the rectangle tool from that. I tend to use keyboard shortcuts so you might not see me clicking on the tools all the time um, and if so that's because I'm using the keyboard shortcuts which also show up when you hover over the tool so paintbrush would be P for instance. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is crop this so that I'm working with the a smaller area that I might want to improve and uh, select the area, go to crop to selection and there's the part of the image that I'm going to use. Let's zoom in on that just a little bit. Okay, um, the next thing I would probably do is uh, scale this down to 200 stitches wide. Sometimes I do it one way I might scale it first and then adjust the contrast. Other times I might adjust the contrast and then scale it or try both ways and see if one turns out better than the other. But this time I'll start by scaling it to 200 stitches wide. Make sure that these are linked together. You can, you can click this to unlink it. Click it again to link it. You want them linked so that the proportions stay the same. Okay, zoom in again. So now I've got it at 200 stitches wide. Um, uh, one tool that I will often use at some point in the process is the sharpen tool. You'll find that other under enhance, sharpen, and again just to uh, make sure you know I am using uh, Mac and so Mac OS with this GIMP. Um, if you're not on a Mac then your your controls and things may look a little bit different, but uh, a lot of the stuff should translate as far as using GIMP. So this will, as you can see, sharpen the image if you look at the preview and um, that just helps to increase the contrast. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but let's go ahead with that one. Um, and Then under uh, colors there are several tools that can be useful. Um, if you click on threshold that will immediately reduce your image to two colors and there are sliders here to adjust the levels um, so let's just uh, see what that comes out like. Uh, one question that I've had from people a lot is how do I get rid of stray pixels? You might not want these little extra pixels in here for your pattern. And so I would say select your pencil tool. And if you double click on your tool you'll get your options window. And a couple of things you need to know about in this options window is um, the opacity. So you want this at 100% so that you're not just changing um, the level of the color by a little bit. Um, the size of the and shape of the tool selection, you can have all kinds of different things. Um, I'll just leave it at this one. Um, and then the, the uh, actual size of your tool you can change here. So if it's at one pixel, I'm going to be going in here and just changing one pixel at a time. You might want to enlarge if you're working with one pixel at a time, or you can make your tool bigger, say 20 pixels, in which case you can get these things very quickly. 
And let me also point out your, your color palette down here. Um, if this, this is the foreground color, this is the background color. If these were reversed and I used my pencil, I would be making a big white dot. Uh, Command Z will undo that step, or you can go to undo under edit. Okay, so um, that's one version. I'm going to back up here um, and use some other tools under colors. Uh, levels is another tool that I use very often and use I use uh, both the slider here and the slider down here um, to well see I didn't have my preview box checked that's something else I want to make sure about so that you can see what effect your changes will have and this is another way to increase your contrast you can play around with uh, where that ends up and once you get to a contrast level that you like um, then I usually go back to image mode switch to indexed and you want this ultimately to be in two colors which is a one bit palette um, and after you choose the one bit palette you can then choose whether to dither it or not dither it so you have these choices none a Floyd Steinberg dither, and, you know, and then two other ones, and you can try those and see. So let's just see what none looks like. So there you have um, a completely black and white image. If I were then to export this to my desktop, I'll call it Woman One, and. and then run that through image to track it should come out looking just like this so I'll leave the vertical stretch at zero I'm going to switch the maximum width to 200 two colors and I'll select that woman one and there's the pattern it's just the way that I just the way that I made it so that's the advantage of, of changing um, your pattern to 200 pixels wide and to a one-bit image. Um, okay, I'm going to back up again and look at uh, some other tools that you could use. Curves it does a lot of things that are similar to um, levels. Again, adjusting contrast in a couple of different ways and then I would go through the same steps of um, saying OK and, and saving that as a an indexed one bit image. Let's look at uh, briefly some of the other um, options here for dithering. Not much different there. We look at positioned a little bit different, but I will just often save these uh, many of these different um, versions, and then at the end select what I like. Um, so that's pretty much most of the tools that I use. Oh, um, if you're starting with a color image, uh, it will often help to start out by desaturating. So. I will uh, look at a color image on the next video. So thanks so much for joining me for these tutorials. And you can find us online at daviworks.com slash knitting. Uh, you can find me at itmakesyousmile.com. And see you next time. Bye-bye.